Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Matters of Faith, the radio show. Matters of Faith is a show that Good evening, everybody, issues and welcome interest to Matters of the listening faith audience show that will Matters challenge, faith and encourage, and encourage and encourage and inspire and welcome you to keep the faith. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell, and it's my job to engage you in stimulating dialogue, dialogue that's inspiring, encouraging, motivating, dialogue and conversations that will help you build your determination, your commitment, and your character, conversations that will help you keep the faith. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 1 John 5 and 4. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, without further ado, it is time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. It's 8 o'clock. It's Monday, August 28th. And it's time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. I am your host and the producer, Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell. And tonight we're talking about the topic and the article. It's his word. It's his word. And tonight, my very special guest, Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff, the pastor of the New Tabernacle Baptist Church right here in the Bronx, New York. We're on Facebook Live on Matters of Faith and the J. Lauren Russell Facebook groups. Telephone and tell a friend they don't want to miss this show tonight. It's his word with Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff. Don't forget to support our advertisers and our sponsors, the JLR Company and J. Lauren Russell Consulting LLC for all of your church financial consulting needs. Check out our website, www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. That's www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. Or simply give us a call, 718-328-8096. 718-328-8096. If you want to train your trustees, if you want to develop your property, if you need a church loan, give us a call. We'll be there to help. Matters of Faith, the book can be purchased at my cash app, dollar sign Matters of Faith. The cost of the book is $22.80. That's $22.80. You can send your check of money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. Get the book. It will absolutely bless your life. You can also get it as an ebook. All you need to do is go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. The book has no shipping and handling if you get it as an ebook. And also check out the Eat Okra app for all black owned restaurants all over the nation. That's right eat okra and finally subscribe like and share our matters of faith youtube channel make sure that you subscribe like and share our matters of faith youtube channel let me add just one more thing get your subscription to better mag magazine today a two-year subscription is only 27 dollars and 50 cents that's www.abettermag.com www.abettermag.com and now the article. It's his word. That article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at the Bronx Chronicle, www.thebronxchronicle.com. You can also find it in the Yonkers Insider, www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. It can also be found in Better Mag Magazine, www.abettermag.com. Black Westchester Magazine, Pamela's Big Heart Newsletter. You can also find it there. It's his word. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, New King James Version. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. It's his word. The scripture says in various times and in various ways, the Lord spoke to our fathers and to the prophets. Whether he speaks to us in written form or the spoken word, we must recognize his word when we hear it. When the scripture says, the Lord spoke to the fathers and to the prophets. It indicates a close and personal relationship between them and the Lord. Fathers were more than biological dads. In a paternal way, 
They stood as the leader, provider, protector, and spiritual nurturer of the family. Prophets, on the other hand, moved with the Spirit of God and were the Lord's spokespersons. They both shared in the divine nature of God and were spoken to in various times and in various ways. Once they received the word, both the fathers and the prophets shared the word with the people. The Lord still speaks in various times and various ways, just like he spoke to our ancestors and the prophets. The Lord does this in two ways. One is through the spoken written word, Logos. Moses had the tablets with the Ten Commandments. The ancient Hebrews had the Torah, and we have the Holy Bible, all a means of sharing his word in writing. Logos is defined as the message from God. The interpretation of his message is essential and is defined by the Greek word rima. The spoken word rima is like the sword or the weapon of the written word, Logos. Just as he did with our ancestors, God is still sharing his word. Verse 2 of chapter 1 says, God now speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Quote, the word became flesh, unquote, John 1 and 14. The importance of hearing his word is so that we benefit from the greatest act of unselfishness ever undertaken, the sacrificial death of Christ on the cross, so that we can, quote, inherit salvation, unquote. Chapter 1, verse 14. I pray that you adjust your hearing so that you hear his word not only when you're reading scripture, Logos, but when listening to the spoken word, Rima, in your prayers, while meditating, while singing songs of praise, or simply in your daily living. God still speaks to us. It's his word, both the Logos and the Rima. The question is, can you hear him? Be blessed. And now here's my question tonight that was prompted by my cousin Valerie who responded to the article that was published on yesterday. How can we condition ourselves to use all of our senses to hear God's word and not be fooled by false prophets? Let me ask that question again. How can we condition ourselves to use all of our senses to hear God's word and not be fooled by false prophets? Well, this gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to some and present to others my special guest for tonight. This is not the first time he's been here. You know something about him, but let me tell you a little bit more about him. Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff is a senior pastor of the New Tabernacle Baptist Church in the Bronx, New York. Reverend Ratliff began his tenure at New Tabernacle on March 20th, 2011, and was installed as their fifth pastor on October 24th, 2011. Dr. Ratliff attended Hobart College, where he graduated with his Bachelor of Arts in English Studies and minored in Religious Studies in June of 1998. Dr. Ratliff continued his education and earned a Master's of Professional Studies in Pastoral Counseling and a Master's of Divinity from New York Theological Seminary. He returned to New York Theological Seminary in October 2018 in anticipation of his doctorate degree, to which he successfully defended his dissertation entitled Guns and Roses and graduated on May 21st, 2022. Dr. Ratliff has always actively served the community, whether it is in ministry or his professional career as a social worker. Since pastoring New Tabernacle Baptist Church, he has, along with the church family, conducted a yearly outreach day that serves over a thousand people in the West Farms community, feeding, clothing, and providing music, health screening, as well as fun and games for the children. Dr. Ratliff created and planned workshops for the youth and young adults entitled, Check Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself. That brings role models together to speak with the youth, helping and hoping to keep them on the right road. Some of the persons who have participated as role models include former NBA players, noted authors, and sorority and fraternities, all of whom have shared their stories and their personal testimonies. Dr. Ratliff served on Community Board 6 for several years, where he was instrumental in helping to provide the Bronx with a mall in the, in the Fordham area and plan annual events for the youth. 
He has partnered with the Black Institute in tackling and bringing awareness to social justice issues, rallying for wage increases for fast food workers, city municipal identification cards for the undocumented immigrants, support for pre-K schooling for children, and the need for affordable housing, just to name a few. Dr. Ratliff has worked for the renowned Harlem Children's Zone, where he was involved in community advocacy and helping families in crisis by providing services and supervising the unit. Currently, Dr. Ratliff works with special needs children and at-risk youth in the Westchester School District. He has also set, sat on the board of directors for School in the Square, a charter school that opened in September of 2016. He served as a trustee and member of the community outreach team that assisted in the recruitment of students as required by the State Board of Education. He also sat on the board of directors for the United Chaplains State of New York, where he served as their director of education. Dr. Ratliff is the first vice president of the Baptist Ministers Evening Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity, and has been asked to serve on the advisory council of the 67th Clergy Council of Brooklyn, New York. Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff is the loving husband to his wife, Deacon Maria Antoinette Ratliff, for 30 years. He's a son of Mother Luzella Ratliff and son in love to Mother Helen Jackson. Reverend Ratliff's favorite scripture is Romans 8:28, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love him, who are called and been called according to his purpose. So Matters of Faith family, would you welcome with me tonight my guest, my brother, and my friend, this brother who works tirelessly to improve the community and the lives of the people in which he serves, my dear friend, Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff, pastor of New Tabernacle Baptist Church in the Boogie Down Bronx, New York. Okay, I think I captured that. I think I got you all the way. And so let me stop my share so that we can go ahead and talk. And brother, I just did this wonderful reading of your bio so people know who you are. But tell us something about you that's not in your bio and we really need to know. All right, certainly. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Russell, for this opportunity to, to join back with you on tonight. And I'm excited about our topic. Uh, one of the things people may not know and, uh, is that I graduated with some famous and infamous people in school. Uh, first off, um, and Alan Stevenson, uh, I graduated with, um, I graduated with, uh, he comes on, um, Dan Abrams comes on the news <laughs> on okay. Channel 7. He's the, uh, he's the, law, the lawyer that they look to for, for legal. Uh, we knew, we knew him as Daniel Abrams. They call him Dan Abrams and that's, that's for sure. That's the famous, Got you. Person. And, and then uh, from York Prep, I graduated with an infamous person in that of Robert Chambers. <laughs> Robert Chambers was the one oh, who, yeah. who uh, fortunately killed Jennifer Levin in, in Central Park uh, back in uh, the uh, late 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um, so I said I graduated with some, some famous and some, some infamous people. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they just denied him parole. No, actually, he's out. Oh, they got they they freed him. Yeah, yeah, he's out on um, parole uh, mm. after doing something stupid again <laughs> uh, when he uh, was uh, set free, you know, and and getting busted with drugs in his apartment. So I, I mean, gave him like 15 years, and I think uh, he didn't do the full 15 yet. But you know, they let him out a little bit early prior to. To that. Well, thanks for sharing that. I know I, I'm the famous and the famous and the infamous. And the, and the infamous, yes. <laughs> famous and the infamous. So. That is interesting. That is quite interesting. And yeah, I, but, so, mm -hmm, go ahead. Oh, I was going. I was just going to add one other thing to it. I, I sort of casually mentioned it when I was introducing you that uh, you were married to Maria for like uh, you know like the last thirty years, but 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 that's very recent. You're mm -hmm. celebrating thirty years of marriage. Man, amen. August 21st, uh, we celebrated 30 years and we was on the West Coast <laughs> uh, celebrating and thank God for, for traveling mercies and bringing us back. So yeah. Here's to, the, here's to the next 30. 
<laughs> That's right. Hey, just keep it up. You know, I think um, just to FYI, everybody in the audience, on the 24th of October, Evelyn and I will have been married 36 years. So, um, you know, but we're in good company right here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. This is when you hit that 3 0, I mean, it's like downhill all the way. <laughs> ain't going nowhere now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> where are you going? You know, it's just too late now. You, you all in. You all in. Like all in. All the way. Game of poker, man. You all in. You ain't going nowhere. So, but listen, I'm glad that you came tonight. I'm really am. I'm, you know, you're not a first time visitor, and that's a great thing. You know how the show goes. You know how we do, and and I'm just so delighted that you took the time out. And it's real difficult because I've been asking. You know, it's it's sometimes difficult to get people that I want to come on, um, and and you know, and on at specific times because of other, other obligations. But that's what happens. That's what that's what effective ministry is really all about. You shouldn't be available all the time to do everything because then that means you're not doing anything. So you need to be busy. So I'm sure. glad you're busy. I'm glad that you're already getting. I'm glad that I was able to wrangle you in because month of October, August, the conference is closed. Yes. Praise yes. for that. Now I've still yes. Hallelujah. I, I've stolen you away when when you <laughs> you had me, but you, you came and joined me anyway. But tonight there's no conflict of interest whatsoever. I got you to myself, and thank God for that. And congratulations to you on your your promotion <laughs> oh 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 you mean with yeah. The, yeah 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 thank you I, mm -hmm. I appreciate that i appreciate that that's a that's an amazing i don't know if i i said this before but i'll say it again just so everybody understands uh the rotary club is an organization is worldwide they're made up of local clubs but it, it's in um is it um 249 countries around the world we have 529 districts throughout the world and I'm the district governor of one district right here in New York, Staten Island, Manhattan, the Bronx, Lower Westchester, and Bermuda. That's and the, the and Bronx Borough Pers president swore you in. So she did. Blessings. She did. Blessings to you, my brother. She swore me in. And thank God, I mean, uh, Darcel Clark, our district attorney, was there as well. And she was prepared to do the installation. Um, um, then, um, uh, you know, of um, our bro president walked in the door at that exact moment. So I had two sort of introductions, which was really nice. But yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. And by the way, this is historic because I'm the first person of color, African-American to ever be the district governor in this district. And we've been in existence for over a hundred years. Amen. Amen. So we're making- Congratulations. History. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And you're gonna go even further. Wow. Might be our next borough president. So I, you know, um, if the Lord say so, I, I'm just trying to do the Lord's will. I mean, truly, I, I don't, I don't do anything unless the Lord tells me to. I, I've, I've, I've done things that I wanted to do, that I thought I wanted to do, and I've tried to pursue careers that I thought that I needed to do. And the mm -hmm. Lord said, "Yeah, you can go ahead and do that, but I, I want you here." And, and so I, I decided that I'm not going to engage in a wrestling match with the lord anymore what he says to do that's what i do <laughs> you yeah. know he says no it's no if he says yes it's yes i don't care um yeah. you know my life is no longer my own it belongs to him yeah. so thank you for the encouragement um wow. if, if that's what the lord says then you'll see me there if the lord says here you'll see me here if, you, so, if the lord says others i'll whatever he says you just yeah. rest assured it will be his will we'll that's our topic tonight too exactly that's right hearing <laughs> that's right, that's right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's his word not ours you know and that's the, that's an interesting thing in fact i was reading something tonight um um uh what is it called um, um like saying like, oh my gosh i should have brought it out sanctified listening or something like that listening for the voice of god to tell you what it is that you need to be doing because a lot of times in ministry what we do is we tend to um project you know, we want to do this. And then in some cultures and some denominations, there are certain expectations of ministry. Right. So if you are, if you are in, let's say the, the black church, um, especially if it's evangelical, mm -hmm. then you're expected to preach from the pulpit. Right. You're not in the pulpit, you're not really a minister. Right. But that's not accurate. Right. 
Right. It's just not accurate. Um, That's right. In fact, when you read when you read scripture of the disciples, how many of them have you read about preaching? Right. Honestly. Or even having a church. Exactly. Starting a church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't. Um, Paul was a preacher, but he was more of a church planter. And and a and a, and an um you know a coach, he was an overseer. Yeah, helped others to grow to become. And then mm -hmm. he again, then he go and do it again. Then he go and do it sure. again. So you know he he knew his role. Right. And he was trying to he wasn't trying to be what he was not. Right. And consequently, look what we got. Right. We got the Bible, right? right. Yeah. Of the sixty six books that were written and the mm -hmm. one. In the New Testament, he wrote the majority of them. Yeah, that he did. So thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. Man. Man. So what did you think when you read the article? I mean, what? Really? Because I know that when I wrote it, um, that some things came into my mind. And one of the things that came into my mind is I was looking at it. And last week I wrote about, um, are you listening? You know, put on your listening ears because God is speaking to us. And this week, it was a follow-up to that from last week. And so this week I was looking at it and saying, yeah, but you know, it's not, it's not our word that we're, that we're propagating. It's his word. It's, it, it's, if you can't and don't know his voice, then you can't share his word. And if you don't know his voice, you don't know who's talking to you. Right. Well, I love the article. And in fact, it, 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 it uh, pushed me to read the whole book of Hebrews. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, it didn't uh, allow me to stop at the beginning, um, and and it's so important, as you said, to know the voice of God, because you know when some God speaks to us, uh, sometimes in our psyche, and if we use our our mentality, so, some of the things that we hear sound crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh God will tell you to to leave your job and open up a business. God will tell you to go back to school, and you. 60, 70 years old, <laughs> you know, it, it, it would it would sound just crazy in our in our psyche, you know, um, if we just put it there and leave it there. But that's where the faith comes in, in that whole faith chapter, you know. Um, you, you read about what these people accomplished in, in the faith chapter. Um, you know, uh that faith is what drove them. And and we we walk by faith and not by sight. So that's why hearing is important. Right. If we went by our sight, our vision, what we see. We wouldn't. We wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't accomplish it. But we have to hear it first. Right. Right. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by by the word of God. And then we got to know God's voice, know that it is Him, and then we got to act on it. We got to put the put it into action. Uh, and sometimes when we put it into action. As we'll, we'll sometimes question God. Oh, did you? Was it really you that told me to do this? Because sometimes it doesn't turn out the way we we think it should turn out. Right. You know, we go through these obstacles. You know, I I can remember going back to school and being doing a dissertation. I'm like, oh, did did I hear you right? Did did you <laughs> really tell? I mean, okay, I got in here. You gave you gave me some money towards it, but now it's a pandemic. People yeah. are dying. Uh, you know, my wife is getting was sick. You know, it's like all these obstacles. I haven't even started yet, and you know, my my classmates have already graduated, most of them, and now mm -hmm. I'm still here. You know, so there, there are times that you question, and I don't say doubt because doubt sounds more uh, it's a harder word than than questioning. You know, but but um, yeah. So so when God speaks, sometimes it really doesn't make sense in our in our in our psyche. So that's really we really got to know God's voice. And when I when I read it, you know, I, I was thinking about even Samuel when he was a, a young boy in the in the temple, and God kept calling him. And he thought it was the priest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was Eli. Yeah. You know, and Eli said, "No, go. It wasn't me. Go lay down. Go lay down." Third time said he told him he said. Uh, tell him, Lord, I hear you. Your servant here, I hear you. I hear your voice, Lord. Um, what would you have me to do, or what have you? And then, and then the Lord gave him direction. But he thought it was the priest's voice, yep. and it was really God calling. Yeah, 
Yeah. And see, that's the right. interesting thing because I, I like that 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 analogy because at the time Samuel didn't know the Lord. His mama did, which says uh -huh. interesting too. You can't know the Lord just because your mother does. That's right. It doesn't matter what your mom and your daddy, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, you have to know him for yourself. And yeah. so she put him in the temple with, with, with the prophet, with Eli, right? And he's there and he doesn't know who God really is. Mm -hmm. God begins to speak to him. Mm -hmm. And then he suddenly realizes that there is a God. Because remember, he really didn't know his mom. Because as soon as he was weaned, essentially, as soon as he got off, as soon as he got off the nipple, he went to be with Eli. Yeah. So he didn't right. really know his mother and the relationship she had with the father. In right. fact, Eli thought that she was drunk mm -hmm. because she had right. that kind of intimate relationship with him, mm -hmm. having conversations with a man that doesn't even stand and can't even see him. Right. So, so yeah, you know, and it's it's really interesting. I, I like that analogy because. You know, and the big part for me is, is to say to people that you can't, your faith, your entry into the kingdom, your ability to be used by God doesn't depend upon your mother's relationship with God. Right. You have to do this for yourself. You have to hear his voice on your own and then recognize it. Right. So like and Paul, I mean, he told Timothy, you know, the spirit was in his his grandmother and his mother. Right. But right. you still got to stir up the gift. Absolutely. Absolutely. You <laughs> don't don't up. rely on that. Right. right. <laughs> don't rely on that. They, they gave you a foundation. Mm -hmm. But now you've got to build a house. That's right. You got to build a house. They, they, they can't do that for you. Mm -hmm. Every man and every woman. That's in the Old Testament even talked about, you know, everyone has to make an account for themselves of their own sin. That's it. You know, and, and so if you flip that around, then you have to make an account for yourself of your own, um, you know, your own blessings. Mm -hmm. So, sure. you know, mama can put a hedge of protection around you through her prayers. Mm -hmm. ultimately, ultimately, you're going to walk through the door on your own. That's right. And stand before God. <laughs> Absolutely. And give an account. Hey, by yourself. <laughs> you and him. Yes, yes. No account? <laughs> well, that's right. Don't really call them no account, right? That's a no right. account person over there. <laughs> that's what they say in the South, no account. <laughs> so you have no account, you know, and that and that's not a good thing. That, you don't want the Lord to say you are no account. You're no account person. That's right. I know you not. I know you not. Depart from me. You work mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Going to that place that I prepare for the demons, right. for, for those rebellious ones. That's right. But if, if that's where you want to go, Mm -hmm. I give you permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's loving God, I give you permission. If that's what you want to do, you got my permission. Yeah. But I was. Uh, <laughs> I think of the a big issue that people have is trusting the voice of God when it comes to the prophets and mm -hmm. the fathers. You you say you talk about it in the in the article. Um, do we? Do we really trust the voice? Because mm. we see man or woman. Do we really trust that voice? And and then is that voice that we hear? Because you know people go to church and they hear the the words from Sunday to Sunday and Sunday, and and it seems like sometimes there's no change in right. the individual. Right. So do, either they don't trust the voice that it's coming from, or they don't think it applies to them. Mm. Now that's interesting. That's an interesting point. They don't think it applies to them. God speaking, mm -hmm. prophet is sharing, mm -hmm. you're hearing, mm -hmm. you don't think it applies to you. You in the church, mm -hmm. in the place, mm -hmm. the right place, the right time, mm -hmm. and you refuse to receive. Right. You know, Dr. Right. McCann used to say something all the time, and I really love this. He said, um, you accept a lot of stuff, but only when you receive it does it become yours, wow. right? Because if somebody gave you a gift, a Christmas gift, and you didn't really want it, you may accept it, right. but you don't really want it. 
somebody gave you something that you really wanted, you receive it. I mean, with enthusiasm and it becomes yours. Right. So when you rebel against that, that, that word coming from the Lord through one of his people, mm-hmm. and you are rejecting the gift. Mm-hmm. You may accept the message, but you rejected the messenger. And the messenger ultimately is Christ, right? So you reject Christ, you reject God. If you reject God, then, then you, can, you can, quote unquote, accept the message, but you never received it. Never right. sent down. Right, right. They give you a, a article of clothing, new clothing, a sweater or polo. You take it, you open it, you put it in your drawer, and you never wear it. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, Ex- exactly. How many? Or you throw it away. <laughs> right, right. How many children give their fathers ties mm-hmm. every Christmas, and they never wear them? They haven't worn them yet. Mm-hmm. Got a drawer full of ties and socks and stuff like that, but yeah. they don't really want them. But they accept mm-hmm. them because right. they were presented by their child. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, by their wife was, you know, but you don't really want it. Right. I was talking to my cousin's husband yesterday. I went out and visited with him. And um, he said something jokingly. Now she might be on, so she don't get mad at him. I'm just gonna share what he said. He said, he said, um, you know, if you give me something for like my birthday or something like that, just make sure that somewhere in there it includes an excursion to go fishing. He said, if it, if it don't have no excursion to go fishing, I don't want to do it. <laughs> he said, that's what I want to do. He says, I want, he says, he says, I'm doing two things now. I'm retired. Mm-hmm. He says, I'm fishing and I'm gardening. I'm a farmer and I'm a fisherman. That's it. Wow. He said, if it don't do those two things, you know, mm-hmm. so he's so I'm not interested in going to a nightclub and I don't want to do that. I want to go fishing right. and I want to go to the garden. Right. Now you think about that, right? Mm-hmm. Person with their mind made up, knowing what they want and what they don't want. Mm-hmm. Well, then um, when you present that person with the gift or you want to give them something, you know what they will give to them. Right. Right. The Lord knows what you want. Matter of fact, he knows what you need. Yes. He's so he you <laughs> you, exactly. You may not want it because you say, you know, I don't, I don't really want it, but that's what you need. The Lord gives you what you need. He supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory, not your wants. Right. And that's the difference between my cousin's husband mm-hmm. and he wants, but God says, I know what you need. Right. So there's a difference, y'all. I'm just using this as an example. There's a difference. Don't there's get a it. difference. Don't get that's it. That's right. Because if he gave us all everything we wanted. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We, we would be a hot mess. That's right. Well, most of us be dead, man, because we've asked stuff that we don't we didn't need a long time ago. That's right. <laughs> Could you think about think about what would happen when when those of us who were doing it were out using drugs and drinking and 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 doing all kind of crazy stuff, and we got mm-hmm. what we wanted, right? And the Lord gave you the best cocaine, the best heroin, the best mm-hmm. drugs on the marketplace, man. Mm-hmm. You be in a second, you be gone. That's right. The Lord's been gracious to you. He did not give you everything that you asked for. Oh. And sometimes you didn't even hear his voice when he did it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Time to get your, get it together so that you can hear. Open your ears and so that you can hear. Hear the voice. Hear the voice. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Good point. Okay. I'll, then, I'll have then, a, you go. And then another thing you you broke down in there, the difference in the word, the logos versus the rhema. Mm -hmm. Logos, the written versus the spoken word. And and it's interesting because when we think about the logos, I know we we, we go to the Bible and that's that's our main source. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being in seminary, they 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 tell you they let you uh, tell you to go beyond the Bible in terms of commentaries. And, and and different translations, you know. So, but sometimes we just stop at the King James version, and I, and I, you know, when we read the King James version, we gotta also keep in mind that this was written about a, a culture, yeah, thousands and upon thousands of years ago, and that's why we got these commentaries and things of that nature that we go to to try to figure out what it meant then, and now what does it mean for us today? That's that's the logos. 
And then the rhema is what we, we preach and what we hear and, and, and what we speak uh, out of our mouths uh, from Sunday to Sunday or from day to day, you know, but the logos is, is where we start hearing the voice of God. But even with that, with the spiritual, uh, the spirit interpret, interpreting within ourselves, we still have to go to other sources and resources. That's what I believe. And that's what, you know, seminary uh, was, was a bonus for me to, to see that, you know, but sometimes people think I just need the, the word and my, and God will give me the interpretation, but also you have to do your research. You got to do your, your homework too, you know, and, and go deeper because what you might think that logos is saying uh, may not be what it's been interpreted, uh, was interpreted back then. In, in the cultural aspect of Israel and the Jews uh, and Christ, Christianity. Right. So it's not just the content, the content, it's also the context. Because yes. if you don't understand the, what was going on at the time, then you may misinterpret what was being said. Mm -hmm. you know, and then you may take what is a proverb and think it's a promise. That's and right. It was a, it was something to give you some instruction and guidance, mm -hmm. but it's not a promise that this is going to happen to you. Right. Or you might take a, you might take a, a promise and think it's a proverb. Absolutely. <laughs> right. You know, but you're not reading it contextually. Right. Mm -hmm. What was going on at the time? Who was he? Who was he writing to? Why was he writing it? What was what was actually happening at that moment? And those commentaries make it make, make it you know give you an opportunity to examine those things, particularly if you don't speak Greek or Hebrew or read and can understand Greek or Hebrew, which is the original language of it. Then you right. have to, you know you have to rely on some of the interpreters. And so many of the Bible translations that we have have been translated so that it reads more contemporarily. So the King James Version may not be the best version of the Bible for you to read so that you can understand the context because they do use thou and all these other words that we no longer use and we don't even know what they mean. Exactly. And so you just, you read it and a lot of times parishioners read it and it just goes right over their head, but they've been sitting in church so long hearing it that they've mm -hmm. accepted it, accepted it, right? Accepted it without mm -hmm. knowing what it really means. And then, Dr. Russell, you bring your own hermeneutical perspective yes. to it when you read scripture and what it says and how you hear God's voice. So you hear God's voice also when you read the scripture based on your experiences, mm -hmm. your life experiences, how you grew up, right. um, <laughs> uh, the culture you, you were brought up in. Um, you know, you, so you bring all that to that scripture through those those lenses, your eyes, and then you know uh, you you you're listening for the interpretation. What is it saying to me now? You know what is it saying to me? Uh, you know so um, it, you bring a lot to the logos, right? And then how you interpret that logos will determine how it becomes rhema out right. of your mouth. That's right, <laughs> and it's interesting because also what's happening to you right now. Because that's why we can read, that's why we can preach from the same text mm -hmm. five weeks in a row and right. five different, complete different sermons. Exactly. Because the context in which we're existing mm -hmm. is different every day. Mm -hmm. And so you see it from a different perspective because, you know, and you may have read a scripture over and over again and then read it one time and say, I never saw this mm -hmm. in the scripture before. Mm -hmm. never had an experience in your life that revealed it to you that way right now it's like oh wow revelation mm -hmm. revelation now and that's you why you see god differently absolutely today absolutely. than you did 20 years ago right or even yesterday you don't even have to go back 20 years even yesterday the way you see god now is not the way you seen him 20 and, and 20 more years or 10 more years down the line you're going to see him differently based on your experiences with God. And it's all about the experiences with God. You know, if, if you if, if you have not drawn closer to him as the days, the months, and the years go by, his voice may sound the same. And you may say things like you said before, he really doesn't care about me. If he cared about me, 
like your wife said, he let me hit the lotto. So I wouldn't have any more financial problems. Right. And then you'd be like Biggie Smalls. You find out that the more money you get, the more, more problems. money, more problems. <laughs> so, so you don't know because you've not been there, right? right. So you right. think that the grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. But to the matter is that grass still has to be cut too. Mm -hmm. And it may not be as green as you think till you get to the other side. Exactly. And see like, oh, I did look greener when I was on the other side, but now mm -hmm. it's not as green as I thought it was. <laughs> You know, I had a really interesting story once. I read it, an interesting story about a farmer. And he decided, he said, you know, I'm, I'm tired of farming. I'm, I'm a, I got to go. I'm, I'm just going to sell my farm and be done with it. So he called the realtor. Realtor came in. Realtor says, okay, no problem. And you got a nice piece of property here. Let me write something up and we'll put it on the market. So when he came back, he read to him the description of his property. And as he was reading, he said, you know, it's plush, it's got great land that's been cultivated, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you can literally plant anything anywhere. This is great property. It sets in a good location, blah, 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 blah. And when he got through reading, he said, excuse me, sir, but I don't want to sell my property anymore. He said, what do you mean? He says, I've been looking for that piece of property all my life. <laughs> Come to find out I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I, I have a chance on this whole transaction because when he heard it, when he heard it, when he heard somebody else as they were looking at what he had, he realized that he had more than he ever thought he had. And sometimes that happens to us, right? The Lord has right. us mightily, but we want something else until somebody comes and shows us and wants what we've gotten because they say what you have is what I want. And they describe what you want, what, they, what you have in ways that you never thought of. And all of a sudden you realize that you've been blessed all along. Right. Right. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Yes. The spirit is saying to the church. We've been through three years of a hard pandemic and we're still going through, <laughs> still yep. feeling the effects as, as we have this discussion today. COVID numbers are going up again. Um, the church was in a I, I don't know how we would describe a strange place or uh, a place of opportunity to to do ministry in a, in a different way and different opportunity. But but as leaders of the church, and you know very well, you have to be able to listen to what God is telling was telling the church or telling the leadership during those those that that time period because there are churches that actually had closed their doors because they yep. couldn't they couldn't survive financially at least from that standpoint and then there are there churches that were able to to coast through it and 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 still uh survive and people have come back now uh it may not be where it was before but they were still able to uh survive and overcome Mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. what had happened through through the COVID uh, situation and the pandemic. But um, here's the danger now, because we didn't get to the false prophets. We got a lot of false prophets that come through, have come through and is still coming through uh, our land. And, and, and Christian, cause Christianity in America looks different from Christianity in, say, Africa or, mm -hmm. or maybe even Europe. Um, Christianity uh, in America, when I when I talk about that, we're more we're more geared towards um, financial stability or <laughs> or the prosperity gospel to some to some degree, and uh, you do have what I call charlatans out there who who may be out there just to to sell their, their oil and their water and as holy and this, that, and the other, and are taking advantage of people, even people that have started off, it seems like uh, strong in ministry, you know, it may have gotten caught up in the economic, um, the economic effects of, of, yep. of false prophesying yep. Yep. <laughs> and, and taking advantage of that. Scratching. And you see it now more than before. Yep. How do you feel? 
what do I, you think? I, I totally agree. I think that, you know, many people have fallen into the trap of, of scratching, itching ears, telling people what they want to hear and not proclaiming the gospel and sticking to the word of God. And so when they do that, so I call it the, you know, the, it's, it's the, um, uh, the plague of, of excitement without enlightenment. Mm, nice. You know, so people, they, they want to feel good. Right. And, you know, it's, it, listen, you know, oftentimes the word of God is not intended to make you feel good. Right. It's intended to save your nasty, wretched soul so that you can be redeemed and you can find your place, you know, have life in that more abundantly while you're in the land of the dying. And then when you pass from the land of the dying into the land of the living, you'll have a mansion with your name on it. That's yeah. what its purpose is. You know, Salvation. We, can, we can, we can, we can, you know, jump and shout and all of that kind of stuff. But if there's no transformation, then you just, you could have went to the party. You could have went to the club. I mean, let's be realistic here. You, you know, just because somebody preaches and you get excited and you jumped up and you shouted and you danced, if there's no transformation in your heart, you just went to a party at the church. Mm -hmm. So you know, I agree with you with regard to the COVID, you know, the three years of, 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 of devastation, we've never seen anything like this before. And some churches came out better than they went in. Right. Some of them did not fight the wave. They rode the wave. Mm -hmm. And when they rode it, think about this. Every church that I know has a list of shut-ins, people who had not been to church for years. Mm -hmm. Years. Years. Because they've been homebound. Mm -hmm. Time they saw anyone from the church is if a deacon or a minister maybe went there to give them communion. And that wasn't always regular. They had no connection to the church. Then suddenly COVID struck and everybody was just like them, homebound. Right. Then we found out that there was this thing called Zoom, right? which I didn't know about. I mean, I was doing this, but I was mm -hmm. doing Facebook Live right. and I was doing it on the radio. Right. And I found out about Zoom. I said, what? I mean, I can look at you like, this is amazing. And then people began to recognize that, you know what, we can reach people that we never reached before. Mm -hmm. And we can go into the homes of those who have been homebound and reconnect them to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And right. took full advantage of it, right. full advantage of it. And, and, and the, the churches flourished. One, one pastor I know down in, um, down, uh, in New Orleans, uh, he's a major, he's a, he's a mega church pastor, pastors a church during when, when Katrina hit they, 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 their, um, their membership was 8,000. Mm -hmm. So he's, a you know, everybody knows him every, in, in New Orleans, everybody talks to him. He said, one of the guys in the community spoke to him. He had been on my guest on the show. He talked about this. His church ran about, you know, on, on the record, on the roll, they had 700 people. That was how many people, members they had on the roll. Mm -hmm. He said, we, if we got two or 300, that would be great. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. When Katrina hit and they started doing things differently. And then when COVID came and they started doing Zoom meetings, their attendance went from 300 to 900. Mm. <laughs> wow. People came and they brought their friend. <laughs> wow. He told my friend, he told, he told Pastor Luda, he said, I ain't never going back in that building. Mm -hmm. He said, because this, <clears throat> this we we have we it's better controlled. He said he didn't fight the wave, he rode the wave. And the people began to come back. And he said, I, I'm paying rent for a building, I'm struggling. He says, we we're getting more revenue coming in, we can do more ministry. We're going out doing things here, there, and everywhere that we never could do before. Mm -hmm. They sold the building. Right. So we don't need it. If we need to, if we need a place to worship, we'll come to your church in the afternoon and rent your space. Wow. So some people actually took the opportunity. Let's put it this way. They saw the situation as an opportunity and not 
as a um as as a as a problem right they weren't saying we got to get back in the church we got to get back in the church they were saying we got to get to the people we got to serve the people so now we have a social media church yes we do that yes, we do. that and even the playing field has been even because it used to be time where unless you was a mega ministry you couldn't have an avenue absolutely like a social media right church right you have to have a cable right time station and right. time that you had to pay for <laughs> and now you know it, it leveled the playing field all of us can get on and preach and teach and, and have that social media church out there listening in to yeah. what god is saying yeah I mean, you know, I think about it, you know, I've been doing this for what, almost nine years now. Mm -hmm. And and we started, you know, I was just doing radio. It was a little something, something. It was something that the Lord placed in my heart, right? I mean, I and I remember, I could tell you the story about what happened, even the writing. I mean, that was God inspired. He told me, you know, I, I like writing. And I said, I want to write. And mm -hmm. suddenly one of my friends called me and said, you know, Lauren, can you write a column for me? It's like, are you serious, Lord? I just prayed about that. And so it started, it happened, right? And right. then I said, I'm, 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 a, I'm an old radio guy, I like radio. I, I was a DJ. I mean, I was there, you know, hip hop's 50 years old. I was there when it started and I mm -hmm. wanted to do radio. So I was, I was in the process of learning and doing that way back then. And so I was saying, Lord, I need to get back into that. And I went to see my wife's cousin in Florida. Mm -hmm. She says, I manage a radio station. It's like, what? So we start talking. She says, yeah, and I do a show. I do a talk show. I said, really? So now I'm listening. I'm listening, right? Because I know this is God talking. Right. Talking through somebody, but he's talking to me. Mm -hmm. Because I prayed about it. Now he's talking to me. Now I could have said, that's nothing. But I'm listening because he got my attention. So I go on her show. I go on once. I go on twice. I go on three times. Her ratings goes up when I go on because the stuff that we're talking about, people want to hear it. Right. As to me, you need to do your own show. You know mm -hmm. what I said to her? I don't want to work. I just want to have, because I know to do this, you got to prepare. Right. This, I don't just come on and just talk off the top of my head. This is, I have to prepare for this. I'm, I'm right. talking to people, some of whom may not know Joseph. They don't know Jesus. Right. So how to be able to present this in a way that people are not going to be resistive to it, but but they were willing to receive it. That takes preparation, which yes. means it's work. Mm -hmm. so I didn't want to do that, but then you know I said, Lord, I you know, and the Lord said to me, Well, what did you ask me for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what am I going to say now? Okay, we're going to do it. And now it's been like nine, almost ten years of doing this. Right. And then when I started, I mean, I had you know small. And I'm, this is no brag. I'm, this is God. This is all God. Right. But there's like two, 300 people every week. Mm. Every single week. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. And I, it don't, there's no telling where else it's going. Exactly. Because I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Right. The word yeah. is getting out there. And that's what I'm saying. It's not about the castle. Mm -hmm. In my business, you know, the J, J. Lauren R. J. Lauren R. Consulting LLC, J. Lauren, uh, J., the JLR company. My motto is, it's not about the kingdom. It's not about the castle. It's about the kingdom. Right. So if we focus, and you know, I do church lending. Mm -hmm. Focus on the building. Mm -hmm. God ain't concerned about no building. What do you care yeah. about water for? Mm -hmm. He cares about flesh and blood. He cares That's about right. heart. So, so in the old times, don't circumcise your flesh. Circumcise your heart. It's not about the castle. It's about the kingdom. And so COVID kind of brought that to the surface. Mm -hmm. We weren't in a building, but ministry had to go on. And, and that was the best time to hear God. Yes. When we were shut up. Yes. In our houses. Right. That was the best time for us to pick up that Bible <laughs> and read it and listen to what God has to say, because a lot, you know, a lot of times we gotten stuck in, and this was in the past, we want somebody to come and prophesy to us. Mm. We, you know, we, we created spiritual uh, fortune tellers and, 
and things of that nature. They want somebody to come to us and give us our own personal prophecy. Well, first of all, God is not going to tell you what what He's already has. He's already said. He's not gonna. He's not gonna give you anything new as opposed to what He's already said in His Word. Right. And whatever somebody tells you and prophesied to you should be confirmation as to what it is that you that God has spoken to you in your spirit. Right. Right. You can you say that you should say that again because that needs to be emphasized. It God should be confirmation. Confirmed. You get confirmation. You get no, there's no, there's nothing new under the sun. Exactly. God confirms it for you. Exactly. But you exactly. gotta hear him. Yeah. If you don't hear his word, then somebody can be speaking to you. I mean, think about it. Didn't the Lord use a jackass to talk to somebody before? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he didn't listen and got his foot crushed, didn't he? Uh-huh. <laughs> See, you, you know, so you better be careful and listen. Keep your, keep your, keep your ears open. Keep your mind focused. Because mm -hmm. God can be speaking and you can miss it. Right. Especially if you don't know what's in that in his word. That's right. Especially, you know, and that, and a lot of folk have been lied to by false prophets, mm. taken advantage of because they don't, they haven't read, uh, or they haven't applied what they've read. Uh, it hasn't come to their remembrance if they've read it at all, you know, and they get caught up. You, that's how you get caught up in money scams. <laughs> you grew up in, where, where'd you grow up in the Bronx? Yeah, South Bronx. I grew up in Harlem. And they had the scams back there. We 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 knew who who was trying to scam us. When every scam that was out there, whether it be uh, three card Monty, mm. whether it be somebody coming with a with a box, and you thought it was a Betamax, and it was nothing but bricks. <laughs> somebody came with some money, some uh, some 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 bills on the outside, and, yep, yep, and yep. newspaper on the inside. You know, you you knew the scam because. You knew what to look out for. Right. And a All brown right. bag, money. <laughs> you, you know what's interesting? You said that's so funny. I'm so funny. You talked about the infamous and the famous. Yes. Well, some of the guys I went to high school with, they were certainly the infamous. The three card Monty Wiz. They before they came to school in the morning, that's how they got their money. On third, I, I went to Alfred E. Smith. I went to a trade school. Mm -hmm. I know Alfred. You down there on Third Avenue. And they mm -hmm. called Monty. They come to school, they got $150. Just like that. Uh huh. Just like that. Uh, uh, and, it's, and, and interestingly enough, the brother who used to do it, guess what his name was? Murph. Oh, <laughs> Murph. <laughs> oh man. That, his real last name was Murph. And he knew, because uh, for those of you who don't know, when you pull a Murphy on somebody, it's like you pull a wool over their eyes. It's like you you scam them. So mm -hmm. to Murph, you know, the Murphy, that's what it was referred to. So for him to have a name like Murph, and he did the three card Monty and all that kind of stuff was kind of ironic. Yeah, so, I mean, if you don't read that word and you, and you don't meditate on it, the devil's going to try you. He's going to come with a scam. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the scams have changed now even as far as social media and and uh, the internet is concerned. You know, people calling folk, pretending to be somebody else, right. conning folk out, uh, uh, you know, out of their money and, and their accounts, people hacking into to accounts and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, you know, they've changed, um, but it's the same. Yep. It's the same uh, concept. You know, the devil has his, his same tricks, but just different faces. Yep. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You know, and that's the interesting thing. We've got to just keep our keep our minds sharp. Be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Because you never know when something is going to challenge your faith. Something's going to challenge your faith. And speaking of which, this is a good segue. I'm going to I'm going to do a ghost right now. And you can you can turn your video off if you like, but I'm going to ghost. And what I'm going to do is go back and just going to introduce and sort of reestablish everything. I'm going to um, uh, look at my um, um, my um, advertisers and sponsors, and then we're going to come back and finish out the show. I'm going to look at some of the things that people have been contributing in their comments. So we're going to bring them into our discussion so that we can finish out the second half as strongly as we did the first half. Yeah.
Don't forget to support our advertisers and our sponsors, the JLR Company and J. Lauren Russell Consulting, LLC, for all of your church financial consulting needs. Check out our website, www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. That's www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. Or simply give us a call, 718-328-8096. 718-328-8096. If you want to train your trustees, if you want to develop your property, if you need a church loan, give us a call. We'll be there to help. Matters of Faith, the book, can be purchased at my cash app, dollar sign Matters of Faith. The cost of the book is $22.80. That's $22.80. You can send your check of money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. Get the book. It will absolutely bless your life. You can also get it as an ebook. All you need to do is go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. The book has no shipping and handling if you get it as an ebook. And also check out the Eat Okra app for all black owned restaurants all over the nation. That's right, Eat Okra. And finally, subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Let me add just one more thing. Get your subscription to Better Mag Magazine today. A two-year subscription is only $27.50. That's www.abettermag.com, www.abettermag.com. And now the article for the last time tonight, it's his word. And that article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at the Bronx Chronicle, www.thebronxchronicle.com as well as a Yonkers Insider, www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. Just scroll down until you find my column, Matters of Faith. There you will find the articles, and it's entitled, It's His Word. It's also in Better Mag Magazine, www.abettermag.com, Black Westchester Magazine, and Pamela's Big Heart Newsletter. It's His Word. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, New King James Version. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. It's his word. The scripture says in various times and in various ways, the Lord spoke to our fathers and to the prophets. Whether he speaks to us in written form or the spoken word, we must recognize his word when we hear it. When the scripture says the Lord spoke to the fathers and to the prophets, it indicates a close and personal relationship between them and the Lord. Fathers were more than biological dads. In a paternal way, they stood as the leader, provider, protector, and spiritual nurturer of the family. Prophets, on the other hand, moved with the Spirit of God and were the Lord's spokespersons. They both shared in the divine nature of God and were spoken to in various times and in various ways. Once they received the word, both the fathers and the prophets shared the word with the people. The Lord still speaks in various times and various ways, just like he spoke to our ancestors and the prophets. The Lord does this in two ways. One is through the spoken, written word, Logos. Moses had the tablets with the Ten Commandments. The ancient Hebrews had the Torah. And we have the Holy Bible, all a means of sharing his word in writing. Logos is defined as the message from God. The interpretation of his message is essential and is defined by the Greek word rima. The spoken word rima is like the sword or the weapon of the written word logos. Just as he did with our ancestors, God is still sharing his word. Verse 2 of chapter 1 says, God now speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Quote, the word became flesh, unquote, John 1 and 14. The importance of hearing his word is so that we benefit from the greatest act of unselfishness ever undertaken, the sacrificial death of Christ on the cross, so that we can, quote, 
inherit salvation, unquote. Chapter 1, verse 14. I pray that you adjust your hearing so that you hear his word not only when you're reading scripture, logos, but when listening to the spoken word, rima, in your prayers, while meditating, while singing songs of praise, or simply in your daily living. God still speaks to us. It's his word, both the logos and the rima. The question is, can you hear him? Be blessed. Okay, here's my question again tonight. Remember, it was prompted by my cousin Valerie, who, when she read the article, asked the question. I'm interpreting it this way. How can we condition ourselves to use all of our senses to hear God's word and not be fooled by false prophets? Okay, one more time. How can we condition ourselves to use all of our senses to hear God's word and not be fooled by false prophets? I've already introduced him and you already know who he is because he's presented himself magnificently. The photo that you see is him and his lovely wife of 30 years, Maria Ratliff, Maria Antoinette Ratliff. And so Mazda Faith family, would you welcome with me for the second half of this show, my friend and brother, Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff. I think that does it. I think we back in stride. I think we back in gear now. Listen. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, um, I, I'm glad that you came back. So let me ask you the question that we've been asking everybody tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. The question that we placed on the table, I'm going to let you be the first to answer. How can we condition ourselves to use all of our senses and not be fooled by false prophets? We started talking about that when we left the false prophets. So I'm going to put it to you. Well, first response, I believe, I believe with uh, praying and the reading of the word on a daily basis, not just on Sunday, <laughs> not just doing Bible study, uh, but on a day-to-day -day basis, reading and meditating on the word, knowing it, hiding the, the scriptures in our hearts and, and, and having it on, on our minds. Um, it starts there. You'd be surprised. Uh, you may think that's something easy, but you'd be surprised how many lazy Christians we have, you know, that don't pick up the word from day to day uh, and and just wait to Bible study or, or Sunday uh, to Sunday, uh, you know, our Sunday worship. So it begins with prayer, life, and also the, the reading of God's word and hearing his voice. And then when you hear hearing his voice, you got to act on what it is that you hear. If you know his voice, then you'll know when he's warning you and when he's telling you to move. When he's telling you to stand still, when he's telling you to move, when you know his voice. When you know his voice and you know his word, you, you'll know that the spirit of God will let you know when somebody is trying to come at you in a way that's not godly or um, trying to scam you or what have you, that stuff that we, we, we spoke about. Um, so prayer, scripture, acting on what it is that, that we hear and not being afraid to, to rebuke, uh, the devil, you know, it, you, it amazes me how sometimes we get so bold and we want to flare up in our brother or sister face in church or what have you. But, you know, when we were out there in the world and dealing with the world, it's a different story. It's like, oh, we're afraid now. We're afraid of, of the drug dealer. We're afraid of this one, that one. We, you know, but uh, we got to be able to rebuke the devil when we see the devil coming at us. Um, I, let us tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, got to know when to, to use the authority that God has placed within us and not be fooled by um, a person's reputation. You know, a lot of times we want to follow what we think are mega preachers, mega ministries, because we think they got it all going on and all this and all that. And so we get sometimes we get caught up in the glamour of of the mega ministry so that if, if somebody is from the mega church, uh, we think it's mega or mega preacher, they can tell us anything. And a lot of times the mega preachers 
are the ones that are, are the false ones. Mm. Are the false ones. But we look at the numbers. We look at how many people they have, thousands of people. We look at the, the, the reputation that they have, the books, the, the things that we get caught up in the celebrity aspect of it. So that it's easy for me to receive from this person, but <laughs> I can't receive from this person. They, they, they're, you know, they have a, a storefront church or they don't have a big ministry over here. So um, it, we, we can't get caught up in, in that. And um, our faith is in Christ. What the book of Hebrews lets us know is Christ was exalted among all the prophets he was exalted uh, over all the priests, uh, and, and he was the ultimate sacrifice. That's the whole book of Hebrews in a nutshell. His exaltation over the prophets, the priests, and what his atoning death means for us in speaking to the church now and today. So uh, once we get into that word and we study it and we hear and we hear God's voice speaking to us through his word, that's seeing, reading, <laughs> our ears are open, our minds are open. It'll open up all those other senses once we, we use that. And then there's the common sense that <laughs> sometimes we don't, that's not, not common anymore, <laughs> Dr. Russell, in, in our society. You know, sometimes just if it doesn't add up, it doesn't add up. <laughs> you know, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Two plus two will always equal four. If you try to tell me it's five, then 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 I can't I can't go with that. I just can't go with that. You know. So those are some of the ways I believe. So let me go back for a second because you said something that kind of this kind of uh, uh, triggered something in my thinking. Praying, reading, studying daily. Now there are some challenges that you're a preacher so you know the, we we expect that from you because you're a man of the cloth you 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 have committed your life to the lord but but the the everyday person um that finds it difficult finds it hard what would you tell them how can they create a you know and i use the word condition how we how can we condition ourselves so how can we condition ourselves to study do it daily. How can we do that? What What are some of the things that you advise those who come to you for direction and 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 guidance to help them to become better believers? First thing I'm gonna tell you: get you a translation that you understand. Okay. <laughs> Let's start there, because a lot of times I speak to people and they say, "Oh, I don't understand the King James version. I don't understand the King James English. You know, I don't. King I just version. they say I don't understand the Bible. They say, <laughs> they <don't understand>. Yeah." <laughs> Well, you're not going to understand it if, if, if you don't understand the language, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I would say, first off, get you a, a translation that, that you can understand and that, that that speaks to you. And then and, and, and take it, set out time for yourself uh, in the day. It, it's, sometimes I think of it as like exercise. We don't approach exercise or going to the gym because we think it's just too hard. But all it takes is a half and 30 minutes to an hour of, our, of, of the time that, that we spend in the day or at night to, to do that. So we can do it, but it's just a matter of doing it. Put, us put aside time, whether it be 15 minutes, whether it be 20, whether it be a 30 minutes of the day to say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to meditate on this word. I'm going to read this Bible, I'll start maybe in, uh, in, the, in the Gospels and John and, and, and get that relationship, get to know who Jesus is and, and what it means to be a disciple of Christ. And then uh, however the Lord directs you to, to read on, whether it be the New Testament or the Old Testament or a combination of both. So get your translation that you understand, set out some time during the day that I'm going to do this at this time. Nothing's going to interfere with it. 8 30, 9 o'clock, that's me and God time, me listening to his voice, me sitting down, studying, and reading this word. So what do you say to that parishioner, that, mm -hmm. that church girl who's been in church for 35, 40 years? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you know, uh the King James version, you know, that that's the Bible. Everything else is sacrilegious, you know. 
Um, how do you get over that? Because there are people who don't believe that anything other than the King James version of the Bible is not really the scripture. And they never understood it to begin with. They didn't understand it 40 years ago and they don't understand it today. But they, they say that's the Bible. And they feel uncomfortable, even if they feel like they're, um, you know, being disobedient if they read any other version. You get that? You ever get that? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I believe in sometimes, you know, stepping outside the box. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we get stuck in tradition. Tradition has its place. Uh, and I don't think you should throw throw it completely out but you know god is calling us outside of the box to be willing to step outside the box going to seminary is going is stepping outside the box it'll it'll challenge your, your thinking and, and if you i mean there's nothing wrong with the challenge it's what you can learn from it you know nobody's gonna ban anyone i don't think nobody's gonna be banned to hell because they put the king james version down and they pick up an NIV, uh, a new King James Version. It's based on uh, an interpretation of the word. The, the King James was interpreted from, from the Sea Scrolls. It, it, I mean, uh, the uh, the Bible, the, this, this Torah and the laws and things of, of that nature were interpreted from something else. So uh, when you look at the, uh, the King James Version, you know, those other interpretations that are interpreted from there you know, uh, give you uh, uh, maybe a clearer sense on how we speak today and how you can understand the Bible. And also, like I said, you got to do your homework with the commentary. This was a culture, this was written to a culture at the time, Israel, that did things a certain way. And so, you know, you, it's more than just the, the, the logos, it's the content, as you say. The content, that's a part of the content, the, the interpretation, uh, reading other interpretations of what you read. I'm not saying that you have to throw the King James Version, uh, King James uh, Bible out. No, use, but you can use a comparison. When I teach my Bible study, I, I use a comparison. Sometimes I use the CEV. Sometimes I uh, use the Amplify Version. And, I, and I'll read it in both uh, the King James Version and I'll read it over in the king uh, in the CEV, as as I go over the lesson, so it's it's just a, a aid or a tool to help me in terms of with the King James version. Of, right, and then, so. and then when you read the King James version, it makes sense. <laughs> you know, because oh, that's what that meant. Yeah, that's what that meant. So right. yeah, let me share this. It's interesting. I'm, I'm glad that you said that, and I, and I asked the question for a particular reason because I remember when I was a young man. Um, I had had a very particular thing happen in my life that that threw me for a loop, um, mm -hmm. literally threw me for a loop. It, it threw everything off, and and I felt like I was so sort of like in a dream world. Um, I wasn't in jail, but I was out. But I was in my spirit. I was I was like incarcerated, mm -hmm. and so um, I was trying to find my way, and. You know, I put stuff in storage because I couldn't, you know, okay, I lost the stuff that was in storage. I mean, just life could just turn upside down. But it was interesting because one of the things I never put in storage was the little Bible that I had. I don't even know where I got it from, but it was a, it was the living Bible paraphrase. And, you know, while I was going through that period, while I was smoking the marijuana, while I was getting high and all of that kind of stuff, trying to self-medicate. I would still read that Bible. And that Bible actually became my, uh, what should I call it? My, my, my safety net. Because I, would, I was able to understand it mm -hmm. and really understand what the Lord was trying to say to me. Now, I had been in church before. I'd been baptized and all that kind of stuff. But when I was going through this thing, you know, I wasn't thinking about being baptized. I was thinking, I wasn't, now my mind wasn't there. It was on how do I survive life? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get caught up in life and we forget the things that we know. And so we've got to have something that draws us back to that. And that Bible that was not the King James Version did that for me. And so I, I share that as often as I can, because I said, you know, um, whatever, if somebody throws you, if you're, if you're drowning, 
and somebody throws you a life preserver and it saves your life, that's great. But if somebody throws you a piece of wood and that saves your life, that's great. If somebody throws you right. a, and you grab it and that saves your life, it's mm -hmm. great. Whatever yeah. saves your life is good. You right. it have to be somebody doesn't have to drive up in a motorboat and scoop you up. Whatever it takes to save your life, that's what's important. Amen. So Amen. that saved my life. And I still have it to today. And I also have a little King James New Testament Bible that was given to me on my 10th birthday by my Sunday school teacher. I still have it. Mm -hmm. And I know my Sunday school teacher. I, I go, I, matter of fact, she had a birthday party just Friday before last. I went to a birthday party. My Sunday school teacher when I was 10 years old. Well, that's what I'm talking about, right? Whatever saves your life, whatever saves your, we don't deserve to be saved, but God continuously gives us life preservers. If you don't hear his voice and you're not paying attention, you miss it. And then you get a false prophet that comes along and says, oh, you have to do that. All you got to do is do this. I'll, I'll get you the money. And, and now you're going towards that. That's mm -hmm. not saving your life. It's putting anchors around, you, around your ankles and uh, anchors on your ankles to kill you. And it's all about accountability also, you know, um, word and the spirit will convict you and, and make you accountable. Once you start reading the word and, and right. just like we're going to the gym and, and you start getting into the routine of, 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 of hearing God's voice through his logos, then you, you, you can't miss a day. <laughs> you know, it's like if you miss a day, you'll miss something. It, it's like when we were in, uh, we were shut up in our in our houses, and couldn't get to church. When church opened back up, folks should have been running back. Mm. <laughs> they should have been running back to the church. Like I'm going to church because because I miss because we we have been conditioned to go to church, mm. you know. And then but then sometimes folk have gotten conditioned when the, three years not going to stay home. <laughs> and not go, you know, at, at the same, you know, at the same time, depending on the person but and how it worked, but I couldn't wait, wait to get back in with the saints, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we kept our church open during the pandemic. We brought people in, uh, about 10 of us, 10 to 12. We had church singing and, and, and preaching and, and did it via Facebook Live and, and just to keep people encouraged where they were. And to keep that ground hollow, but at the same time, you know, folks should have been running back hungry, like oh, I'm at three years. I've been out two, three, four years, whatever. I'm ready now, you mm. know. I'm ready now. But unfortunately, we've seen a decline in America when it came to when it comes to the church now, and they they don't know if this decline was happening before the pandemic or as a result of the pandemic. People aren't going to church like they used to. It was happening before. I've done some research and, you know, from the statistical information that I had from, um, you know, working with the Southern Baptists who love taking, they love statistics. So, um, you know, it, 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 the, the church has been shrinking. In fact, they made a major move to, to go to church planting. The reason they did it is because it has been found that people who never had a relationship with the Lord would rather go to that small, that small, um, uh, you know, uh, a storefront church than a mm -hmm. large established church with all their traditions and stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they connect with anybody there. And so they stay away. But when they go to a small, you know, not innocuous church, that, you know, at just a little thing, they feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they so you might notice that smaller churches, newer churches, new churches in particular, are growing faster than mm. older established churches. Because the, the, the unsaved people, people who don't know the Lord, don't feel comfortable coming into our traditional church. I mean, think about it. When they come into our traditional church, what do they run into? Oh, you can't come in right now. No, you got to stay right there. Don't, don't move. Don't move. Uh, you can't. 
So they run into the traditional things that they say, I don't want to be here. Then they go to a meeting, not worship, go to a church meeting. <laughs> and they find people are fighting physically. Mm -hmm. They're like, why would I come? I know the people in the world. Right. I thought they were different. They're worse than the folks I've been hanging out with. Right. So they don't want to be a part of that. And if they see that initially, then they don't want to be a part of any church. It turns them completely off. And so, you know, what you do, Reverend Ratliff, I admire. Because you're not closed up, never have been. And I've known you for, for a number of years now. Yes, We've sir. grown up together. Yes, um, you're not confined by the walls of the church. People know you because you know them. You go where they are. You, you, you know, if the people won't come to the mountain, mm -hmm. take the mountain to the people. That's right. And you do that. And so people recognize you. They know you. They feel comfortable with you. And so even if they don't come into the physical building, they'll call you, they'll talk to you, they'll, they'll enter, they'll engage you. Because remember, if we keep thinking about looking at the numbers in the church, we'll forget about the numbers in the world. It's the numbers in the world. I, I, I say this all the time. You may have heard me say it. Mm -hmm. Don't count numbers. Make the numbers count. So if you've got folks in the church, equip them, mm -hmm. they can go out and compel others. And I, when I say to come, I don't mean for them to come into the building, but to come into a relationship with Christ. Because once you do that, what you said before, you're compelled to come mm -hmm. to. See, they, you won't be able to keep them away. Mm -hmm. Because the relationship, the, the heart has been changed. Now I got to go in this presence. I got to go where people are worshiping and so on and so forth. And I don't care what craziness they do. I want to be, a, I need to be in this environment. Mm -hmm. That's when they come. Not because of anything else. It's because someone has done a witnessing to them where they are. You know, the gospel met them where they were. So uh, this uh, Blackaby, and I'll let you say something. Blackaby, mm -hmm. uh, author, man of God, he said, find out where God is at work and join him there. Mm -hmm. Well, to God be the glory for what you said, uh, Dr. Russell. Uh, you know, one thing I, I'm pretty sure I, I know about, Christ would be where people are hurting. Mm -hmm. and he always went where people were hurting. You always find Christ in the midst of crisis. Yeah. And you always find Christ, and as a result of being in the midst of crisis, you'll find him being controversial. So if you're going to be, uh, it's, it's, you can't be, a preacher, a teacher, evangelist, without having some controversy around you. Mm. Christ was controversial. You know, um, what he did was controversial. They they made it controversial. Mm. You know, when he healed on the Sabbath, controversy. <laughs> you yep. know, uh, he, he, he's talking about his relationship with God the Father, and he's uh, he's the son of God, controversy. Hmm. He, you know, uh, he, he's riding uh, a donkey hmm. into Jerusalem instead of a white horse, controversy. He's dying on a cross like a common thief <laughs> or, or a criminal, controversy. Hmm. You'll find him in the midst of crisis and controversy and him being controversial in who he is. So if you're going to be a Christian and you're going to be radical for Christ and you're going to be a real Christian, there's going to be some controversy that's going to follow you. It's going to be some uh, some controversy, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. There's going to be some controversy. That's right. You know, folk are going to talk about you. They're going to say good things and they're going to say some not so nice things. <laughs> you know, but 
is going to controversy is going to come with the position of being a leader, a Christian, um, and and hearing God's voice hmm. because people understand tradition, but they don't understand vision. Hmm. People know tradition because this is how we've been doing it for years. But vision says shows you how you can do things in a different way, and are you willing to change that? And that's why it's, it's so hard for pastors to, to come into churches or uh, to start pastoring churches in, them, uh, in, in the beginning because all the, the church has a tradition. And sometimes vision will challenge tradition, tradition. And vision can also work with tradition. But sometimes they don't want to see vision as to how we can do things differently and how maybe the prophet or the the, the prophetess is hearing it and telling, relaying it to the fathers who are relaying it to the family and to the churches and things of that nature, how it's being passed down. Um, sometimes they, they close their ears up. You know, they don't want to hear that. But, you know, vision and, and tradition have to work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, you can't have one overshadowing the other because uh, what, what the Lord told Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain. And so when you write it, it's up to the, those who read it and hear it to run with it. But if they don't agree with it or don't want to hear it, they're not going to run with it. Right. Or don't hear it. They refuse to hear it. I mean, it's uh -huh. said but they're not receiving it. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's a consequence for that though. There's a major consequence. There's talk, a consequence. Talk about it. Yeah, oh man, for, for not listening. You know, we're talking about hearing God's voice. You know, when the prophet, it was Elijah, you know, um, he had got to his wits end. He was running from Jezebel and <laughs> King Ahab. And, and uh, he thought he was the only prophet left. And he was there in the cave and he was like, Lord, take my life. I'm ready to die. Mm. Kept falling asleep and the angel woke him up and, and asked him a question. What are you doing here, Elijah? You got to eat. You got to, uh, I got more work for you to do. Uh, but the Lord spoke to him and the Bible says it, it wasn't in the, the, the loud things. It wasn't uh, in the earthquake. It wasn't, it wasn't in the fire. He spoke to him in a still, small voice. Whisper. Yeah. And see, we look for God in the, the flamboyant and the, the excessive. We don't take time to be still. Let God speak to us in the still, small voice. Aja could have died in that, in that cave, but it was when the Lord spoke to him and and gave him a, a rest that he ran on and did what he had to do. The consequences of not listening to the word of God, Moses, they didn't listen to Moses, a, a whole generation died <laughs> in the wilderness. Oh, got sick in the wilderness. It's no different today. We don't Wait. sin. Don't, don't move too fast. Don't move too fast because Moses had his own battle with disobedience. He did. And Moses. That's right. And it cost him. That's right. There's consequences. So just because just because you wear a collar, That's just right. you call yourself preacher, just because you've been uh -huh. the center, just because you've yeah, been all you've been pastoring for years. I don't care. No the matter. These are the same. You commit, you you going to have to pay the penalty. Right. Moses did not get into. He was able to look, mm -hmm. he saw it, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Right. so missed the whole. He missed the promised land. He saw it, but didn't come, couldn't go in. Your eyes may shine and your teeth may grit, but none of this promised land did he get. <laughs> yeah, and that's a lesson. That's a lesson for all of us. It doesn't matter if you're leader, pastor, or people. We all, uh, if we if we turn a deaf ear. Uh, we are disobedient. That's why I said when you know the voice of God and you hear it, you got to act on it. It's better. It says uh, if, if you know the way and you don't do right, 
it, you'll be beat with, with many stripes. It's better that you didn't know the way. Either hot or you cold, or if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you out of, out of his mouth. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's important that we hear his voice and act in it, act on it, and, and, and hold us and hold each other accountable. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be accountable anymore. Everybody wants to do what they want to do. Right. Nobody want to talk to the pastor. Nobody want to talk to the deacon. Nobody wants to talk to the trustee. We just want we, we're gonna do. We're gonna do what we're gonna do, and this is how we're gonna do it, and the, without accountability. Just let me do what I want to do, and when I want to do it, and don't bother me. Don't tell me not to do it. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Don't ask. Don't. I don't need to have a conversation with you about it. I'm just gonna do me. And, that, nope. and that's been going on in the what? church since. Yes. And since the church started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this, I, I'm glad you said that because it kind of reminded me of something. I'll just point this, put, I'm going to put this out there. Um, you now write these articles, right? The Lord has given me this, this mission, this, this ministry of writing these articles. And they get into secular hands because they're published in, in secular, you know, circulars. So they're getting into, they're getting the people that don't show up at church. Right. But those of us who do, and those of us who do read them, I preach about what I talk about, what I write about. Nice. Because I want to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. For everyone who reads the article, when I preach, if you read the article and it comes mm -hmm. out Sunday morning, mm -hmm. I'm asking you to hold me accountable. Do your own research. If I'm wrong, point it out to me. because. Mm -hmm. If I'm not held accountable, if you can't take me at my word because I said I've prepared, I've done what I needed to do to make sure that I present the living word to a dying world, then I don't care. I want to be held accountable. I want somebody to say, you will, you missed that one. You, you missed. I'm, I'm OK with that. I'm OK with that. Then that means I got to go back and do some additional research myself. I'm I'm not, you know, I'm 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 Moses too, right? You get on my nerves, I hit the rock and stuff, you know. I no, I ain't gonna speak to it. Bang, you know, I don't want that to happen. So yeah, I want to, I want accountability partners. And so the Lord gave me this as a means of, you know, in my opinion, is to be accountable. I'm writing this stuff, I'm researching, I'm looking at it, I'm writing, I'm putting out in the public. It's high. People look at it, they see it. If if it's wrong, tell me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because I don't want to misguide anybody. And I think when, when it came down to, you know, the Lord calling me into ministry, the one thing that scared me more than anything else, one thing, misguiding people, giving them wrong information, and they missed the mark. And that's what that definition of sin is missing the mark. It's, a, it's, a, it's an archery term, and it means missing the bullseye. Mm -hmm. And if something that I've done, something that I've said, makes people miss the bullseye. And in spiritual terms, it means that you missed the mark and you miss getting into the kingdom of God and you go to hell because of something that I did. That scared me because I'm saying, I'm not, I'm, you know, I, that's too much responsibility for me to take. And the Lord said, but it's not your word, it's mine. It's his word. You deliver the message. You do what I tell you to do. I'll take care of the other part. So and that's where I got my comfort at. Right. And we make the mistake sometimes as leaders, or we, or we should pray that we don't fall into the trap of Samson. We make the mistake of thinking that God only speaks to us. Right. That's right. Samson went out and didn't know God was, wasn't even with him. Right. Didn't even have his back. Right. We, we make that mistake thinking that that's why I tell the congregation, I said, look, you know, if you want to, do something, just talk it over with me and, and, and let, let's see how we can make this better. How we, God might birth a ministry in you. I tell them that. God may birth a ministry in you, something that we don't have and we're not doing inside the church or outside the church. Come and talk to me about it and see, see how we can, we can get it going. Because I know that God, I'm not the only one that God speaks to. Right, <laughs> right. You know, but sometimes as leaders, we act like that. Yeah, yeah. So, and what, and and the fault that we have is we shut people out. Oh, that's crazy. I told you that. God called when He talks. 
in, the, in our psyche, it really doesn't make sense to our psyche. And we walk by faith, not by sight, you know, because we don't see it. But we got to overcome that and walk by faith and say, okay, with God, all things are possible. Well, so let's let us let us try it. Mm-hmm. And we we got to be the kind of brave enough to say, you know what, if we failure is just an opportunity for growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. If we fail and we will fail, don't look at your failure and concentrate on the fact that you fail. Concentrate on what the growth is going to come out of your failures. Right. Do you know we we grow more from our failures than we do our successes? Because if we if everything we did was successful, then we would have no reason to go back and examine ourselves. Mm-hmm. Dennis Waitley, who's a psychologist mm-hmm. and he's a great speaker and all that kind of stuff, he said something really interesting. He said, when you fail at doing something, you really haven't failed. You just got a result that you weren't looking for. Right. So uh. it's what you do with the result of what happened that determines whether or not it was a quote unquote failure or not. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you get whatever the result is, and he used a, he used a golfing analogy, and he said if you you know you take a club and you swing at the ball, mm-hmm. and you hit the ball on the top, and instead of it going pew down here, it just falls off the tee and rolls down about five or six feet, you know. Right, right. And, you know, you haven't failed. Mm-hmm. It's got a different result. Mm-hmm. So what do you do now? Mm-hmm. You can, well, in golf, you can call a mulligan. You can do it, you can get a do-over. Mm-hmm. Or you hit it from where it is. Right. You hit it from where it, wherever the chips may fall, that's where you are. Right. right? I, when I was when I was doing when I was a DJ, I wrote this rap, right? And I said, um, be the captain of your ship and the master of your fate. And when you live, let everything be love, because that's all you can ever afford to think of. But before I said that. I said, you know, you have to pick up the pieces where they fall and begin from where you stand. Be the captain of your ship and the master of your fate. And when you live, let everything be love because that's all you can ever afford to think of. Just enjoy what you have today while your emotions are running wild. Take the time it takes to find you. Take your will and make time stand still and do it while you can. Mm, Nice. So, and I wrote that, I don't know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Yeah, but and it's, it's because still applies. See, right. See, it's because see for me, right? Even in my even in my DJ years, there was a purpose in my doing that. I could I just I I, I wasn't the guy who could just go, you know, uh and, and all these party things. I couldn't do that. There was right. there always had to be a, a message there. I guess that's right. why my career didn't take off in <laughs> in, in that arena. Because Hip-hop. <laughs> right. I mean, it didn't take, I mean, I did okay. I mean, it helped me to get through college, part ways through college. It paid a lot of my bills. I did right. a lot of fun, but it didn't, I, I'm I'm not one of the guys that's in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Gotcha. Even if I was there. Mm-hmm. Because my, my way of looking at it was different. I had to do, be the captain of your ship and the master of your fate. Because that's my message. It had to have, it had to have something that would help people to elevate. Right. It wasn't about cussing folks out, putting them down, you know, or just partying all the time. I, I that was I couldn't I as much as I wanted to, because that was the way people were making money. I couldn't do it. Right. I couldn't do it. Now, I didn't know the voice of God, right? I was baptized. I, <clears throat> I had that, you know, living translation Bible. I was reading it, but but right. but 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 I was like, I was like. I was like, Samuel, God was calling. And I was like, what, Eli, you know, what, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know that it was the voice of God trying to speak to me. Right. That came later on. Mm-hmm. And then when I finally figured out that it was God speaking to me, I stopped running. And so I would, you know, just, just challenge you who are listening to, to begin really listening to really start listening because God can speak through anything and anybody. 
Man. Get it twisted. You know, you could be walking down the street and Mm -hmm. see something on the street, a horrible thing that happened, and that's God trying to get your attention. So, you know, please, ma'am, please, I I mean, I, I implore you, because God is still speaking to us. He's not stopped. He does. He is not given up on us. Mm-hmm. Not given up on you. And if you just listen, mm-hmm. you just do what, what, what Pastor Ratliff said, carve out time every day. I don't care if it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, but do that every day. Read something, read something from God's word every day. And what will happen is you'll develop an appetite. Mm -hmm. right your day won't feel complete unless you do that Mm -hmm. if you do it in the morning if you get up 10 minutes earlier in the morning and use those 10 minutes just to open the book after a while you won't feel comfortable getting up in the morning and not doing it do it because your life depends on it you know in john it says I think it's 514, we passed from death to life. So when this thing that we call life is over, you're either going to go to hell or you're going to pass into life. So your life is at stake. Right. Because your your appetite will either drive you or kill you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're going to crave- get an appetite is going to either drive you or kill you. Yep. You're going to crave something. That's right. Crave something. So <laughs> as well crave that which provides life. Mm-hmm. And you can do that. You can actually condition yourself so that you have an appetite for good things. Look, I know people overeat. They eat all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, we eat a lot of starch. You know, even in the church, let's, let's, let's be real. In the church, we have macaroni and cheese. We got rice. We got potatoes. We got bread. Pasta. We got, then we got maybe some string beans and then the meat. Macaroni salad. Absolutely. Uh, a macaroni salad, potato salad, all this starch. And we wonder why folks got high blood pressure, the cholesterol going through the roof. They got diabetes. They Then they try to figure that out. Why, 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 why? Why can't I walk up the stairs anymore? You know when you ate that package of bacon that was going to make you wide? You knew that, but you did it anyway. At some point, we've got to take responsibility for what we do. And it it, it, it crosses all, it crosses uh, every area of our life. It's not just when we get up in the morning to study the word. You Mm -hmm. We have to do this in every area of our life. It's it's got to be our spirit over our flesh. It's got to be. And so, what's good? What is good about it, Doctor Russell? Is God God will give you signs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't die right away. Sometimes some some of us die slowly, <laughs> but we don't die right away. But He gives you the signs. Yeah. Let you know the doctor tell you don't. Stop eating this. Do this. Do that. He telling you. He talking. That's 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 the voice of God right. coming through your doctor. <laughs> right. right. You know he's talking to you. Change right. your lifestyle. Right. And, and that's all it is. He's telling you from a physical standpoint. We tell you from a spiritual. Right. And hopefully the spiritual will play into the physical. <laughs> but right. he's telling you, look, if you don't do this, that, and the other, it's gonna get worse. That's what the prophet said. You don't do it this way. <laughs> And you don't do it God's way, it's going to get worse. Right. You know, God is the only one who has the right to say, it's my way or the highway. Mm-hmm. The only one who has the right to say that. That's right. And he says, and I can, I'm concerned about you. Everything about you. You don't have to eat like that. You don't have to do those things. You know, you, you, you need to walk. You need to, you need to, I, I gave you this, this, my, it's, you know, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Which is in you, which you have from God, and you are not your own. You've been purchased with a price. What with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belong to Him. It's in the book. I didn't say this. I ain't saying this is in the book. Go read it for yourself. 
hold me accountable. See if I'm right. Right. And if I'm wrong, I listen, I, 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 I'll, I'll shine your shoes for a week. But if I'm right, then you live up to it. Do what yeah. the Lord says. I'm, you know, and it's, it's interesting because he gives us all of the tools that we need. I, I remember when my sister had an accident down south and we were in the hospital for, about, I was down there for about a month because I didn't think she was going to make it. But um, a couple of days before I left and the Lord had healed her, brought her out of intensive care and put her in rehab. Only God. I was sitting in the lobby with this older lady. And you know that song, um, Come On in the Room? Yeah, we sang it Sunday. Oh my God. I mean, she, the, the, you could feel the spirit in, in the whole waiting room, right? I mean, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. We're talking. And she said, when I became a Christian, I gave Satan all his tools back. Right, right. <laughs> And I looked at her, I said, you know, that preacher's like, I ain't never heard before. I gave him back all his tools. Uh -huh. I ain't got nothing in it. I ain't got nothing in my toolbox belonging to him. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm looking and saying, you know, that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. You gotta be committed to giving it all back. Mm -hmm. For God, I live. God, I die. And we talked about Moses, you know, Moses lived to about 120 years. That's right. But when he when he died, he died with all his faculties in place. Can you imagine what Moses' body must look like? Wow. <laughs> at the, even at the end of his life, to have and, and not to have been sick, and not to have shown any type of wow. of, of you know sickness, color, skin color the same, same weight. You know what I'm saying? Looking just like he looked and nice and nice and fresh. <laughs> and the Lord just said, you just ain't going to get in. I'm, I'm taking you to my house. But, you know, <laughs> shape. I mean, you ain't good. You could you could live another hundred years. Mm -hmm. You could live as long as Methuselah if I want you to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, think about this, right? That genealogy, that genealogy they talk about things in the book of Genesis. Mm hmm. The one who lived the shortest number of years, mm -hmm. the shortest number, and that was like three hundred something years. Yeah, mm -hmm. was was um, Enoch, mm -hmm. and the Bible says Enoch was not because yeah. everyone else, everyone else, Methuselah, Adam, everybody, the end of their little their little their little write up was and he died. He died. That's right. And he died. Yeah, Every he died. died. Mm -hmm. Enoch. Right. Enoch was not because God took him. So think about that in relationship to what we're talking about tonight. You have a choice. You can either be like everybody else or you can be like Enoch and not because God will take you. Mm -hmm. I want to be taken. I, I just want to be taken. I mean, you know, however it happens. I mean, I know, I know I may have to die. I may have to have, well, have a, well, have a, you know, cause once you die, you're dead. It don't make no difference how you die. What difference does it make? It only matters to those of us who are on this side. But remember Enoch's testimony. He pleased God. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> we don't know what he did, but we know he pleased God. Didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. Right. He pleased God. That's what right. we do. Now. Right, right, right. Right. That's all we count. Up. That's all we care about. He pleased. Mm -hmm. He pleased them. <laughs> so now, much so he didn't taste that. If we can do that, if we can just please him, mm -hmm. be all right. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Hey, listen, I'm almost out of time. So let me give you a few minutes and let you close out and share what you are saying. I'm going to share what the Lord has placed on my heart. And then we're done for the night, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Is, I've I've had I've had a good time. <laughs> me, really. me too. Thank right, you so I didn't look at your comments and bring you in, but y'all know why. We just had a good time. We just well, I want to say thank you, Dr. Russell, for having me on again. And believe it or not, I still slip and see your uh, your show even after the um after I get home at home from the uh, Monday night conference. So <laughs> you still on my mind when 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 I when I when you don't see me in 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 uh Facebook Live. I want to thank New Tabernacle Baptist Church, those are, who are on, and, and my family, amen, also who, who join in with us. 
Um, thank you so very much, all of you for Facebook Live and Zoom. Uh, I just want to say this, uh, study to show thyself a fool. Read the word. Don't just read it, apply it. Don't just uh, read it, uh, meditate on it, hide it in your heart. Take time to do so. Um, learn the word. Ask God for his spirit to interpret. But also don't be afraid to branch out and, and read other interpretations, read other spiritual things that, that will keep your mind stayed on God because it's a lot of good authors like this one, Reverend Dr. <laughs> Dr. Lauren Russell, who's wrote, written books on uh, about the word and about faith that you can purchase. Look, those are, those are great tools also. Don't just stop at the Bible. Let the Bible be a starting point and take you even further. Don't be, a, don't be afraid to go into school. Don't be afraid to get on a, uh, in a Bible study or a Sunday school to study the word with other saints. Uh, there's a lot we all don't know. We learn together. It's not one person just teaching. We're all learning in this chat room, in the Zoom room, in the church, uh, in your Sunday school or your Bible study class. Thank you for, for being on again. Uh, use that logos and turn it into rhema because you got to go out there and you got to spread the gospel. We're all called to do the work of an evangelist. Like Nike said, just do it. Well, that's awesome, strong, and I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you so much. So listen, you know, it's true that we don't know what we've got until we lose it. But it's also true that we don't know what we've been missing until it arrives. That's the way it is with the word of God. If you ever had it and lost it, you will soon miss it. And if you've never had it, you won't know what you have been missing until you get it. So let me encourage you to get it. When the word of God comes into your life, things are never the same. You are never the same. Life is never the same. There is power in the word of God. God speaks to us in written form and through the spoken word. Our responsibility is to recognize his word when we hear it. And when we receive the word of God, it's our responsibility to share it with others. It's your, it's not your word, it's his word. I pray that you adjust your hearing so that you hear his word, not only when you're reading scripture, the logos, but when listening to the spoken word, the rima in your prayers, while meditating, while singing songs of praise, or simply in your daily life. Keep your ears open. God is speaking to you. Once you hear his voice, let it permeate your spirit and empower you to infuse your word with his word. The Bible says you have the same spirit in you that God used to create everything that is. He breathed into you the breath of life. The Bible says that you have the same authority as Adam. You can name everything in your environment and it will be what you call it. Your word fueled by your faith can accomplish anything you say. See, God's word becomes ours. God breathed into us the breath of life. And we're the only creatures that he created that have the ability to speak according to what we say. Angels praise him all the time. A donkey, jackass, was spoken here, heard to speak once. The serpent in the Garden of Eden spoke one time. We speak all the time. God gave us some of himself in us. Do you want to know how and why? Because it's his word and it's in you. We've truly been blessed tonight. Reverend Dr. Hiram Ratliff has raised the bar on how to use all our senses to hear the authentic word of God and not be fooled by the charlatans and false prophets that occupy pulpits and proliferate the airwaves and in books that we read. Talk about making a difference in putting his word to work. Just look at my guest tonight. Thank you for your transparency, my brother, and sharing with us the difficulties that even you as a pastor have and have had discerning the voice of God. You didn't talk about it, but you alluded to it a lot. We all have challenges with that. It's refreshing to know that we are not the only ones who sometimes struggle to get it right. I'm sure our audience 
tonight agrees with me when I say that you really have been a delight to talk with tonight. Did you enjoy your visit tonight? Yes, sir. And I hear the Lord telling me to tell your lovely wife <laughs> that we asked about her and to say hello. And Lady Ratliff, amen. We love you. Amen. I love you. And uh, congratulations to you on uh, 36 years of, of marriage, my brother. Amen. And, and thank you for this uh, opening and opportunity that you give to preachers, to uh, not just preachers, pastors and, and people who are in political fields to come on and talk about matters of faith. It's not just about uh, the pastor or the preacher or whoever that's in the, in, in the uh, ecclesia, but it's Ecclesia, but it's also about those outside who have, who are faithful over what God has called them to. So thank you for your dedication and your service to do it. Well, you know, this wasn't your first time and it won't be your last time with us either. And I know it will be challenging because of your Monday night commitment to the Monday night Baptist Ministers Conference, evening conference of New York and Vicinity, well, where you will soon be its president. <laughs> In oh, we're not going to rush it. <laughs> it is coming. All right. You tell me when you're available, and we'll okay. work out, and we'll work you in. Certainly. Certainly. We'll, not a problem. Is that a yes? Is that a yes? Yes. That's a yes. That's Perfect. a yes. As long as there's life in the body, look, I'm at your, at your service. I appreciate it. Now, listen, don't forget our sponsors and advertisers. The JLR Company, JLR and R Consulting LLC, for all your church financial needs. Just call 718- 328-8096. I didn't put that in the chat, but you got it. 718-328-8096. Or visit our website, www.jlawrenmuscleconsulting.com. You should check it out. You really should. It's not about the castle. It's about the kingdom. And Matters of Faith, the book. I've been talking about it. This is the book. Now, look, and I want you to see how thin it is, right? And it's thin for a purpose. Because there are 52 chapters in this book. Each one I want you to meditate on for a week, for a week. In fact, they're not even 52, there's 50. And you know why there's not 52? Because I want you to take a two week vacation, just 50 weeks, one chapter a week for 50 weeks. And that's how you can help condition yourself to reading something every day that strengthens your Christian walk, that strengthens your faith, that builds you up. The book is $23.40, and that covers shipping and handling. Or you can get it as an ebook, www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That is in your chat box. If you do it that way, the book's $20, but there's no shipping and there's no handling and you get it immediately. Better Mag Magazine www.abettermag.com. Now, listen, I, I want you to say, they, they have picked up my article. They publish once a quarter, once a quarter. Better Mag Magazine is a Black-owned magazine, and they are a Christian-based uh, uh, magazine. A two-year subscription, not one year, two-year subscription is $27.50. You need to get that subscription because in it, you will find not just my article, but a lot of pertinent information that you can use. Again, one of the things that we're trying to challenge ourselves to do is to read something daily from the word and some interpretation of the word so that we can continue to grow and to become. Jesus said, I'll make you to become, which means there's some work to be done. Now, don't forget, subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. That's important. Telephone, text, email, message, any way you do it, but tell a friend to join us regularly on Monday nights for Matters of Faith, the radio show. We're always on live on Matters of Faith and the J. Lauren Russell's Facebook groups. When this show is over, as we do every night, we drop each episode of our Matters of Faith onto our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Now you can watch YouTube sit laying in, you can watch that laying in your bed on TV. So check it out. Subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. That's why I ask you every week to subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel because eventually I want to broadcast specifically to YouTube because the platform is bigger. It's bigger and it's more robust. Now, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. If no one has told you this today, then I want to be the first to say that I love you and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. So get used to it. God bless you all. You know, I love you much. There's nothing you can do about it and nothing I will let you do about it. And I um, look to see you soon. Uh, we will be talking and I will see you next week. Same time, same channel. God bless you. Good night.